Can this really be true? Is this two draft league analysis back to back Saturday, Sunday, filling up your weekend? Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for the season two draft analysis of the SPL, the Shuckle Premier League. We are bringing it back legacy style, baby. It is the OGs of draft getting back together for Gen 9 for uh, schedule isn't even out yet, like eight weeks plus of madness, which I'm super excited about. We have a banging roster. If you guys are excited for this season, make sure you guys leave a like. If you're new, subscribe. We have double draft content on the weekends between this and the Pokemon Premier League. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below if you guys want to check that out as well. Uh, and like I said, subscribe on our way to 50,000 subscribers over here. It's my end of the year goal, and you can help me get there. Appreciate your time. We got, guys, we have OGs. We got... We got people that Joey pulled out of retirement, out of the Shadow Realm, to come, the good Shadow Realm, not the bad Shadow Realm, to just come back and play Draft League. I mean, we got Uzi Gunner, we got Hayden, we got Playmore, we got Pokemon, uh, General Tar Heel, we got Gator. Gator hasn't played Pokemon in years, he's back. We got Six Foot Hex, we got Pokeam himself, of course, we got Drooby, we got Shuggle King, we got Chimpact, we got Chimpact, we got Kyle A, we got Num Nexus, we have shady freaking penguin we got envy it's a stacked roster ladies and gentlemen you do not want to miss this check out all the coaches in the description of this video so that way you guys can keep up each week with their draft analysis the weekly battles really looking forward to it uh this of course being played with the indigo disc dlc um i'll be taking this opportunity to go through my draft and kind of talk about my thoughts for it um and yeah really really excited for it i think that this team is very interesting because historically uh, probably about four picks in, you'll you'll I'll talk about the the theme of the team because it, it starts out one way and then takes a hard turn. Um, but historically, I haven't been the biggest fan of this specific niche of team before, and I'm I'm hopeful that Gen Nine provides me some revitalized passion for for this style because otherwise we're just gonna make some free agency transactions and call it a day there. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this was the first time I've ever had I think in a long time, um, probably since like ultra sun and moon days that i've had a really good slot in the draft order so with the 16 coaches um we had uh you know 16 back and forth snake style draft i had third pick overall so really i could get my hands on about anything i wanted aside from the two mons that uzi and hayden take so um first up when dragapult to be expected it went first last season it you know joey won the, the championship with it so there's some there's some uh some symbolism there um, Hayden grabbed Darkrai. I'm not the world's biggest Darkrai fan. I think that it, it can be a little bit one-dimensional, but so can a lot of Pokemon if, you know, you think about it hard enough. So um, Hayden's been battling a lot longer than I have, so I'm sure he will be excellent with it. Um, but my first overall pick, brand new in Generation 9 in the Indigo Disc DLC, was Gouging Fire. Now, Gouging Fire is insane. Um, it is the... Paradox, the past Paradox version of Entei, it is a fire dragon type. It is the protosynthesis ability, so when the booster energy or sunny day is active, it gains an extra 30% in all of its, in the highest stat, unless that stat is speed, then it gains an extra 50%. It has such impressive bulk. It's got 590 base stat total, right? 105 HP, 115 attack, 121 in defense, 65 special attack. We're not hitting specially offensive. 93 special defense and 91 speed. That, that baller, absolutely baller. So this thing is crazy. Um, great coverage uh, offensively. You know, it is the it is the dream that Entei never got to be. It has access to Earthquake. It can set up with Dragon Dance. Um, has, you know, your standard body slam, crunch, facade, things like that. Flame charge to boost speed in that regard. Flare Blitz, Heat Crash, Iron Head. It has recovery in Morning Sun. So it can set up in Dragon Dance. It can it can recover with Morning Sun. It has Outrage. It has Psychic Fangs. It has the Fire Type Outrage and Raging Fury. Uh, Stone Edge. It has the new Temper Flare move. I mean, this Pokemon is 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 a monster, and I'm hopeful for it. You know, not not many draft leagues, if any, are using are, are ongoing right now to really gauge success. I am hoping that this Pokemon just 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 tears it up. I mean, it is so naturally bulky um, that it just it's just going to do well. It's just going to do well. Run it with a booster energy. Run it, you know, with Dragon Dance. Run it with Flame Charge 3 attack, whatever that might look like. Um, I mean, this thing is an absolute monster. I'm looking forward to it. And really, upon grabbing this, I wanted to start grabbing 
Pokemon that I felt synergized defensively with it. So Gouging Fire, Fire Dragon type. It is weak to Ground type. It is weak to Rock type. It is weak to Dragon type. So we do have a, you know, we are neutral to Fairy because Fire resists that. We are neutral to Water because Dragon resists that. So we only have the three weaknesses, Ground, Rock, and Fairy. So, or, excuse me, Ground, Rock, and Dragon. So I wanted something that could help pair together with that pretty, 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 pretty well. And especially after last season in the SPL, um, I, I, I have a little bit of a, a, um, uh, a cluster shock of being uh, uh, hazard stacked against, right? I, I got hazard stacked a lot. People took advantage of that, which is fine. That's the appropriate thing to do. I'm not complaining about that. It just happened a lot, and I didn't have much to deal with it. So I wanted something to help out with gouging fire's weakness to stealth rocks, so I'm not forced into heavy duty boots. Um, I wanted something that can help out the... Uh, you know, the ground weakness and the dragon weakness as well. And what fit the bill next is Corviknight. Now, Corviknight, flying steel type, uh, has pressure, unnerve, and mirror armor as abilities. So pressure, mirror armor, pressure probably most commonly, but unnerve could be niche, uh, mirror armor could be niche as well. In Generation 9, a lot of Pokemon lost access to Defog, and I wanted something to, to help with that. So that is Corviknight. Corviknight is immune to ground type attacks because it is a flying type. It is, uh, it resists the dragon type because it is a steel type. Um, and it provides great defog support. It provides a very reliable defog support. It has access to roost. Um, you know, it has tailwind support. It can taunt, it can U-turn. It can do the standard things that you want a, 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 a big bird to do, quite honestly. Um, very excited for this pick. There's some other things you can do with Corviknight. You know, some people have run like the power trip set. Some people have run like bulk up, iron defense, things along those lines. So there can be a multiple, <clears throat> a multitude of things that Corviknight can do, but really solid defensive backbone to pair alongside gouging fire, solid defogger for there, but I'm not done. I'm not done. So uh, still weak to, you know, dragon still hits us hard, right? You know, we do have a resistance, but we do not have an immunity. I talked about it in the Pokemon Premier League draft analysis that went up yesterday. I think that you should draft immunities, you know, where you can, because otherwise type spam can just really double down on you. So I wanted a fairy type. I wanted a Pokemon that still fit into this same mindset of uh, helping out with a rock weakness in some form, helping out with a ground weakness in some form, helping out with a dragon weakness in some form. Round three may be debatable. Uh, Galarian Weezing. Galarian Weezing is a poison fairy type Pokemon with three abilities in Levitate, Neutralizing Gas, and Misty Surge. Levitate, Neutralizing Gas, more likely the the two abilities we will bring. However, if we do want to bring like a Misty Seed Pokemon and, and bring Misty Surge, that can be pretty cool. Um, but really, Levitate to give us a ground immunity and Neutralizing Gas to nullify our opponent's abilities on the other side of the playing field. With a Fairy type, we now have a Dragon immunity on that, so we can switch this in freely on Dragon moves that might otherwise um, really hurt Gouging Fire. Um, we do have Levitate, so we can switch in. We have another Pokemon that is immune to ground type moves. Obviously, if there is a Mold Breaker ground type like Excadrill rolling around, um, you know, Mold Breaker, Bulldoze, Ogre Pond, Hearth Flame, we will take damage from those. But traditionally, just a random Pokemon going for Earthquake that doesn't have Mold Breaker will be good to switch in on those things. Uh, Galarian Weezing, also a very reliable defogger. Something else to note on the evil side of things is that with enough Pokemon losing access to defog, I have drafted two of the more reliable defoggers in the draft pool. So, uh, <laughs> but that's that's really where my head was at, was we can still defog away rocks. We can be immune to dragon type moves. We can be immune to ground type moves. We've got a really, really good, like, synergy going on between these three, I feel like. And Galarian Weezing, you know, it does have, you know, your standard poison fairy moves. It's got Dazzling Gleam. It's got your Clear Smog. It's got Haze. Um, it's got the signature strange steam, a bit, uh, strange steam move, excuse me, like that. It's got Will-O-Wisp. It does have Toxic Spikes, which is great. If our opponent does not have a grounded poison type, we can look to set those up as well. Um, Memento, in case we do want to take the opportunity to set up with something like Gouging Fire or one of our other picks down the road, just to kind of keep up momentum on there. Really, really excited for this pick. Really, really excited for this one. Now, the next Pokemon is where the team starts to kind of take shape because at this point, I, I wanted Gouging Fire and I wanted support for it. And then I wanted to kind of build out, you know? Um, and after this next pick, it, it really was kind of determined the route I was going to take. So coming back in round four, you know, we've got a lot of physical pressure. We got a lot of physical pressure. We got a lot of bulk. We need something fast and we need something that hits hard. And surprisingly, this Pokemon was still on the board. And I talked about it in last season of the Shuckle Premier League. This actually wanted, I wanted this Pokemon to be my round one pick overall in the first season. 
talked about it in the post game interview with Joey during quarterfinals. I really wanted this Pokemon. I really wanted to try it. So alongside Gouging Fire, I have also drafted Walking Wake. Walking Wake is a water dragon type. It is the paradox form of Suicune with the Protosynthesis ability. This Pokemon has, again, 590 base stat total, 99 HP, 91 defense, 83 special defense. Okay, it's got, it's got some, some fair bulk behind it alongside its really natural defensive typing. Um, its attack is 83, so we can go for things like Dragon Dance if we want to, to, to maybe set up in that regard. 125 base special attack and 109 speed. So it puts us in a good speed bracket above base 100s, which I always really like to have. Unfortunately, base 110s like the Lotties are the first ones that come to mind. Gengar, I believe. Um, those are naturally going to outspeed us unless we run, you know, Scarf or we do run a Dragon Dance set and kind of get above them. Um, but this Pokemon is great. So naturally, we do have a we do have a Dragon weakness and a Fairy weakness off our Dragon typing, right? Um, we are neutral to um, we are neutral to Ice, which is fantastic. We are neutral to Electric, which is great, and we are neutral to Grass. And that's another thing I forgot to mention about Gouging Fire with the Fire typing is that we are neutral to Ice as well. So really good in the fact that we only are weak to the dragon type, you know, the dragon type weaknesses in Dragon and Fairy, which we've already got covered in Corviknight and Galarian Weezing. This Pokemon's awesome. It's got priority in Aqua Jet. Um, it does have some physical moves that it can run. We talked about how it can set up a Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw. Um, dropping huge Draco Meteors off 125 base special attack is going to be great. We've got Turn Momentum and Flip Turn. It got access to Knock Off. It has the signature move Hydro Steam, which is an 80 base power water move during sunny day. It does 1.5 times damage. So now that is a 120 base power stab move. It hits harder than Hydro Pump in the sun. And it's 100% accurate, which is great. Um, we do have access to Scald as well, which is always a good thing. Um, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to this. And at this point in the draft, it was kind of my head went to where the rest of the team is going to go. And that is with a Sun team. Now, I, I want to take a break about the draft now since just give my thoughts on Sun teams really quickly. I think prior to Gen 9, Sun teams were really not good. You know, um, you know, with things like uh, Slush Rush, you had some multitude of typing. You know, you had like a Alolan Sand Slash and um, you had Bear Tick that got like some coverage moves on there. Um, with the, uh, you know, with Rain, you had Pokemon like Kingdra, you had Bear Scoot, you just had a, like a lot of Pokemon that, you know, might have been similar in typing, but really could provide a multitude of things on there. You know, another Pokemon like uh, introduced like a, a Quillfish, um, had Swift Swim, you know, Hisuian, Quillfish, Overquill all had the Swift Swim ability. So there were a lot of Pokemon that could really, really do well in Rain, right? As well as Hail, in my opinion, you know, Pokemon like Bear Tick, Pokemon like Alolan Sandslash. But Sun really, to me, and you, we can disagree about this in the comment section. Sun really felt one-dimensional. You had like Venusaur, you had like Shiftry, you had a lot of Pokemon that while they were in the sun, took extra damage from that their own weather. So Venusaur with, you know, not Mega Venusaur, regular Venusaur, in the sun, fire does more, fire is going to hurt me more. Pokemon like Shiftry, Pokemon like Victory Bell, like Vileplume. It just really felt like, and they all really did the same thing. You know, grass move, gr poison move, coverage move, maybe growth or recovery or something along those lines. So to me, it felt very one dimensional and I hadn't been a fan of it. So I was really hesitant going into that, especially because I'm not the world's biggest fan of the existing sun setters. So and I'll talk about that a little bit as we get down the draft, but that's really my thoughts on where sun is. So the team may change before the season is over. I don't know. Um, I'm hopeful that this is, you know, a, a very good team and I hope you guys think so as well. Um, but that's kind of where that's the, the direction that the team is now taking as these picks come down the road. So we'll go on ahead and just get back into analyzing the picks. So next up, we've got a lot of seasoned veteran draft players, and I really wanted to within this league, different from the Pokemon Premier League, we have the Terra Captains in this league. We can terrestrialize Pokemon that cost nine points and lower. Aside from a few banned lists, you can always check the fan doc in the description down below if you guys want to take a look at what we had access to and which Pokemon were banned from terrestrializing. But we have a lot of Pokemon that can do that. We need two to three Terra Captains within 15 points, all that cost eight points or lower. There is no separate point bracket in the other draft, like in the other draft analysis that I talked about. So I know in my head that um, other players are going to start drafting some of these Pokemon that can be Terra Captains because what did you have a good Terra Captain? It, I mean, no one else gets it and you have a pretty solid staple on your team. So I wanted something that I felt was a a very solid Terra Captain in here. We still don't have too much special offense either. And speed is okay. You know, we've got 109, but we don't have much that sits above that. So 
The next Pokemon that I drafted, talked about liking my immunities beforehand. The next Pokemon that I drafted was Miss Magius. Miss Magius is a pure ghost type. This does give us a normal and a fighting immunity, which is fantastic. It does have the levitate ability. We have yet another Pokemon that has an immunity to ground type moves, barring any Mold Breaker Pokemon. Um, this Pokemon is very frail physically, so 60 HP, 60 attack, 60 defense, but it makes up for that with 105 special attack, special defense, and 105 in speed. Uh, this Pokemon is my Terra Captain. So on top of the, so the same rules apply as far as Terra choices go as they did last season. We need to pick one of the Pokemon's natural types if there are more than one, and we need to pick two extra types. So this Magius, obviously we grabbed Ghost um, because it is a pure Ghost type. The next Terra type that I wanted to go with was Electric. I think Electric Terra type on Levitate Mons is maybe, maybe, um, uh, maybe not, not underrated. I think it's overrated. Um, but I like it because now I have a Pokemon that can freely set up with no weaknesses, which is fantastic. Um, gives us stab on top of, you know, moves like Thunderbolt and Charge Beam if we really wanted to. And the last Terra type that I went with was Stellar. Stellar is the new Terra type that was introduced in the Indigo Disc DLC. It does give all of my moves an additional 20% boost the first time that I use it. Um, and then it goes back down to the normal, you know, damage output but it also gives my stab moves double boost. It gives it like an adaptability boost one time, and then it goes back down to just the additional extra 50%. Why did I go that route? Miss Magius really benefits from that quite a lot. It has a variety of coverage moves that it can go for that would really appreciate the additional 20% boost. You know, Miss Magius isn't a Pokemon that looks to go into another type to like set up. Um, you know, some, I, I think of something like a Flash Fire Mon, you know, like Gra Terra Grass Heatran that has Flash Fire. You know, you're obviously going to try to hit it with a fire move. Your Flash Fire absorbs. It's not the only way you can hit that super effectively is with, you know, Ice Flying or Bug, which you're not probably going to have against a Heatran natively. So it makes you play a little bit differently. Miss Magus, in my opinion, doesn't want to do that. Um, you know, we could have gone with Fairy. I was, I was talked, you know, spoken with about maybe going into a Fairy type. So we have that Dark Resistance if we do want to do that, but... I wanted to go with Stellar. I like the electric a little bit, just a little bit better. But I wanted to go with Stellar because we have so many different moves that we can go for from a coverage perspective that we benefit from. You know, things like Dark Pulse, Dazzling Gleam, Draining Kiss, Energy Ball, Future Sight, Foul Play, Grass Knot, Hex, Hyper Voice, Mystical Fire, Poltergeist, Power Gem, Poltergeist Physical Move, we're never running that. Power Gem, Psychic Noise, Psychic, Psy Shock, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, Things along those nature, there's other moves that are down there that could benefit from that. But all of those different coverage moves, you know, we might run Nasty Plot 3 attack. All three of those moves upon terrestrializing into that Stellar type get that 20% boost. On top of if we're running Shadow Ball, which now gets double boosted, which is fantastic. So really looking forward to this pick. I think it helps provides us some special offense to our team. And I think it helps us to continue to kind of round out again that, that, that ground weakness that I want to try to mitigate as best as possible. And I think it's a really good pick overall. Next Pokemon that we grabbed. Um, this Pokemon, I, I don't know if I might be overlooking something here. This Pokemon is insane. Uh, this Pokemon is insane. And, uh, obviously it has a very, it has a very glaring four times weakness to a, to a typing that is pretty prevalent in draft league format. So that might be why it was priced pretty appropriately and nobody really had an eye on it. But as a dark type, it does give us a psychic immunity, which is great. Um, I, I really, really am hopeful that this Pokemon does well. And if not, we can toss it back into the pool, make some free agent transactions because it costs 14 points. So um, of our 120 point draft. So a little over 10% of our budget power to get this Pokemon. I drafted Hoopa Unbound. Hoopa Unbound is a psychic dark type Pokemon. It has the magician ability where if this Pokemon has no item, it steals the item off a Pokemon. It hits with an attack. Hoopa Unbound has 680 base stat total. It has 80 HP, 60 defense, 80 speed. Okay, speed tier could be a little bit better. You know, HP stat, it, 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 it's fine. Um, defense, not so great, 60. 160 attack and 170 special attack. Oh my God, 130 special defense as well. So like even like an assault vest set on this thing could be nuts. Absolutely crazy. Um, and I'm gonna like, like covered moves. So it gets access to set up through Calm Mind. It can get access to a nasty plot as well, which is crazy. It can be a trick room setter. It has, you know, brick, brick, dark pulse, drain punch, energy ball, expanding force, facade, fire punch, focus blast, foul play, future psych. I mean, so many, the signature move, hyperspace fury lowers the user's defense by one and it breaks protect. 
brother. If they don't have a dark resist, we just click Scarf Hyperspace Fury until the team goes down and really wear down as much as we can until the rest of the team come in and clean up. I mean, it is so, again, maybe I'm overlooking something. So so the four times weakness, it is four times weak to bug um, and a lot of Pokemon run U-turn for the pivot. So finding safe switches into this Pokemon to hopefully do significant damage is really the, the name of the game there because otherwise people can predict the switch and just click U-turn and then I'm dead especially with 60 base defense, but offensively, I this thing is like a howitzer cannon, and I'm hopeful for it. I'm very hopeful for it. I think this is a Pokemon that I wasn't too, like in the, in the draft planning stages, I was like, this Pokemon's really good on paper. I'm gonna draft that next because I don't wanna leave it to like the end of it. Like it wasn't a key member of the team. It was just kind of there to just, okay, I need something that hits really hard from physical side. Oh, okay, Hoopa Unbound goes in, Choice Banded moves and waits for Gouging Fire to come in and clean up. I need something special. Okay, Choice Specs Hoopa Unbound goes in and just cleans up. So I'm I'm, I'm very helpful. I'm very helpful for this Pokemon. And if it, if my hopes get dashed and it is no longer beneficial, then I will put it back to the pool and I will grab something else that I think might fit the overall theme a little bit better. But very excited for Hoopa Unbound. Next Pokemon we grabbed, so talking about immunities we need an electric immunity uh which is always a good thing and we need some hazard setters we only have toxic spikes on galarian wheezing right now the next pokemon i drafted to fit the overall sun team theme was sandy shocks sandy shocks is the paradox magneton it has the protosynthesis ability to further get boosted in the sun which is great uh overall it's got 570 base stat total 85 hp 81 attack 97 defense 85 special defense okay fair uh, 121 special attack and 101 speed. So it does put us in a speed tier above base 100s, which is great. Um, electric and ground type, I'm hopeful for. I, I've only came across this Pokemon once. Um, so I'm hopeful that it can do some things, hopefully. Um, we do have access to both spikes and stealth rock, which is great. We do have more speed control with another Thunder Wave user. Um, has access to earth power, has access to volt switch, which is really what I want it to do. You know, I want it to hit hard on the special side with its dual stab. I wanted to set up hazards and I want some pivot momentum with the Volt Switch. So that's what it's there for. Really excited for that Pokemon. Hopefully it does well. And if it doesn't, like I said, Sandy Shock is one of those where I was like, eh, okay, like, sure, we'll give it a shot. Um, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that with the appropriate, you know, team together that Sandy Shock can really put in some work and uh, be a reliable hazard setter, reliable ground type for the team. Now, with all the sun talk, we need a sun setter. And I know what everybody's thinking. You're like, oh, oh. Seabed, Seabed's going for Torkoal. He only has one hazard setter. He's going for Torkoal. He's going for Torkoal. I don't, I, I, I'm not a fan of Torkoal. I, Torkoal, so, so respect to Torkoal. It's got an insane special attack stat. It's got some good bulk. It's super slow. And I, you always have to get it in clean, I feel like. You either have to run heavy duty boots so you're not taking the hazard damage. And you have to get it in clean because otherwise it's going to take 25% of rocks and it's gonna take a huge hit, and before it can even do anything, it's gonna take another huge hit, or you switch out to something to take that huge hit because you know you're gonna lose it either way. So I may change this based on it, but I did not draft Torkoal as my Sunsetter. I drafted Kanto Ninetales. Ninetales is a pure fire type. It has the drought ability. It has base 100 speed, base 81 special attack. That's what I want out of a Sunsetter. It is fast. It can come in and hopefully do something and then leave if need be. Ninetales also does have access to Baton Pass. We can Dry Pass in this league. We cannot pass stat changes. So we do have the ability to switch out, whereas Torkoal does not have Baton Pass, U-Turn, uh, Teleport, anything like that. So we do have momentum to get this thing in, get this thing out, and especially with our speed, we can hopefully outspeed something that is about to attack us. Uh, it has access to set up through Calm Mind and Nasty Plot, which is great, and it hits hard from the special side, especially in the sun. The fire moves are going to hit that much harder. 81 special attack is not the world's greatest, but with being able to set up with Calm Mind and with Nasty Plot, really, we're just here to set up a fast sun and get out, um, which is what I'm here to do. Um, you know, we've got support with Will-O-Wisp and things like that. I'm hopeful that Ninetales is better than Torkoal. Torkoal was one point more than Ninetales. So again, you're thinking like, oh, well, Sandy Shock is only Hazard Setter. Sandy Shock is probably getting put in the Hazard Setter role more, more often than not. I mean, we, we will likely always need an electric community, so Sandy Shocks will likely always come to these matches. Um, and it will likely carry rocks or spikes or both if need be. Um, so I'm not too worried about, we've got two reliable defoggers in Corviknight and Galarian Weezing. Um, so I'm not too worried about the additional removal with spinning. So that's Ninetales. It's Ninetales. I'm hopeful. If not, again, the, the, I feel like the back half of the draft past Miss Magius was like, sure, let's try it. And if it doesn't work, we free agent it out and we rebuild the team for the next half of the season. But I'm hopeful for it. Um, if you're if you're a Ninetales hater and you're a Torkoal stand, let me know in the comment section down below. 
Um, we've done a lot of talk about setting up in the sun with our protosynthesis users, but I also want to make sure that outside of protosynthesis that we can also capitalize on that with a chlorophyll user. And there are a few options here. You know, there was there was Venusaur, very reliable. There was um, lower tier Pokemon that could maybe be Terra Captains with like Victory Bell, Shiftry, Vileplume, things like that. But again, wanted to grab something a little bit newer, something maybe maybe I hadn't used before. And I grabbed Hisuian Lilligan. Now Hisuian Lilligan is a grass fighting type Pokemon. It has 480 base stats. Really nothing to write home about bulky, but it does have 105 base attack and 105 speed with access to chlorophyll, which doubles my speed in the sun. Uh, that hits like a truck. That hits like a truck. Um, especially with access to moves like Close Combat, we have access to moves like Solar Blade, both of those being 120 plus base power moves that are boosted by Stab, which is great. Um, we do have access to Triple Axle, which is great. Ice type move. We have access to the signature move Victory Dance, which boosts our attack, defense, and speed by plus one. We can operate this thing outside of Sun as well, which I think is really, really beneficial with maybe like a Hustle set. We can run a little Hustle Wide Lens set, go for some Sleep Powders, go for some Victory Dances, start hitting things really, really obnoxiously hard there. Um, another thing to note about Hisui and Lilligan from a support side is that this is another defogger. We now have three defoggers on the team and Hisui and Lilligan being able to defog it fast as fuck, boy. I am, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we also do have on top of, I didn't mention this with Ninetales, but now with Ninetales and Hisui and Lilligan, we also do have Healing Wish support. Really, really great for some of our Pokemon that don't natively have healing. I'm looking at you, Walking Wake and Hoopa Unbound. We can hopefully bring those things back with a good healing wish and be good to go. Last Pokemon, we did need another Terra Captain. Um, I've talked about my immunities and we do not have a ghost immunity on the team yet. And it really came down to like, what, what do I want to do here with the remaining three points? Do I want to grab like Terra Ivysaur for one point? Maybe grab like a two point Mon? What do I want to do here? And I was talked into, I was talked into, and I will say that very adamantly, I was talked into Greedent. Greedent uh, is our last Terra Captain. Greedent is our tier three pick. It is a normal type, so it is a ghost immunity. It has two abilities. It has Cheek Pouch, where the, if this Pokemon eats a berry, it restores one third of its max HP after the berry's effect. So one of those big, like I have Papa berries, all of a sudden you're getting two thirds of your HP back. Gluttony, it eats those same berries, the quarter the quarter of HP berries, it eats those at half max HP or less. So very similar to, you know, if you're familiar with that ability on Snorlax, it has that. <clears throat> um, It's really bulky. It's really bulky. It's got 120 HP, 95 defense, 75 special defense, 95 attack, 20 speed, 20 speed. So like same vein of me talking about Torkoal doesn't do anything. Good news is that we do have Trick Room with Hoopa Unbound. So potentially Greedon can go in and just really claim some hits, especially being able to terrestrialize it. That's really the selling point for me outside of like Torkoal, because I'm going to talk about this thing and you're just going to think in your mind, like he said the same thing about Torkoal. Because we can terrestrialize Greedon into a, so we, so the three typings are normal, fairy and ghost. Um, fairy is going to give us a fighting resistance. Ghost is going to give us a fighting immunity. Normal is just going to boost our normal's type even harder. Um, this thing can set up with a few different moves. You know, with the with the cheek pouch or the gluttony abilities, we should be able to get up. I'd love to get up like one belly drum this season and kind of go for it. But it acts as a great terrain sweeper because not too many Pokemon have like below 20 base speed, right? I mean, this is very, very slow. Our gyro balls are hitting absolutely nuts. Um, got access to knockoff. We've got, you know, our body slam, double edge earthquake. If we don't want to go for a belly drum, we can always set up with things like curse, which is great. We can set up with Swords Dance. We've got our Terra Blast, of course. We've got Wild Charge. I mean, we can run Skill Link Bullet Seed if need be. So so we'll see. I mean, it is it is there to help us out with, you know, uh, the 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 Dragapults, the uh, the Cerule Edge. I'm looking down the line at, like, all the ghost types that were drafted. The Haunters. Um, oh, you don't have a ghost type. Oh, oh, oh. That might be the Greedence Week right there. Anyways, um, <laughs> um, you know, the frost last, there we go. I had to look down. There was a frost last there too. Um, so I'm, I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Um, and again, it falls into that same category of this is the, you know, bottom half of the draft where I have five free agent picks throughout the season. If by week three, I'm like not feeling it. Cool. You know, greeting can all of a sudden become Dunsparce or something different if we need be. So uh, that's the team. That's the team for Shuckle Premier League season two legacy season. Um, I'm very hopeful for the team. I think it has some good operation inside and outside of Sun, which just makes that extra dimension of prepping for my opponents that much more difficult. Please let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on the team. Who do you think is your favorite member? Who do you think is going to be MVP this season? 
because I think it's going to be gouging fire, but it might be something else. So we'll definitely see. Of course, in the description, there are all the other coaches in the SPL. Please go check them out. Go check out their draft analysis. Keep up with them on their week to week battles as well. It's draft season over here on YouTube, baby. Every Saturday, we got our PPL matches. Every Sunday, we have our SPL matches. Stay tuned for game day. If you're new, subscribe on the way to 50,000 subscribers. Draft League content every Saturday and Sunday for the next couple months in your faces. Really looking forward to it. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. As always, I want to remind you guys to be great and do great. And I'll see you guys next week for game day.